friends, thanks for coming back to my channel. I'm going to show you how I wallpapered this ceiling. The walls you're looking at, I put on a separate video. But the ceiling is all detailed in this video. Join me as I show you how I did this wallpaper on this ceiling by myself. But first, let me tell you where to get your wallpaper. Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Tell them I said hello and enjoy your discount. Okay, so here's the ceiling. We have a three layer skim coat. After it dried, we have two layers of guards, G-A-R-D-Z from Zinser, and we let it dry. For the first sheet, we determine where the center of the ceiling is. We determined which direction we wanted to hang the wallpaper. You can go parallel with the longest walls, or you can go parallel with the shortest walls. It's a consideration that is undergone by both the homeowner and the installer. And different factors are taken into consideration. Angle cuts, uh, different parts of the wallpaper that might get cut out due to uh, different angles in the room. But after you determine the first sheet and where it's going to go, in what direction it's going to go, you have to determine the center. And we're starting our first sheet in the center. What you're looking at on that ceiling right now is a laser line. I drew two pencil marks from the wall that's parallel to that laser line. So obviously you have two walls that are parallel to it. I chose one and I drew two pencil marks so that I could give myself a laser line. And that laser line is showing me where the edge of my first sheet has to go in order to stay in the center. We can't call it plumb, we can't call it level because we're on the ceiling. And so we're going to say we want to keep our laser line and our first sheet equidistant from its parallel counterpart walls. You'll see as I go on that this wallpaper has two walls that run parallel to it, and those are the side walls. Your laser line has to be straight and constant in between those two walls. And the way you do it is to either snap a line with a chalk line. I don't like doing that. Uh, I think you need help when you do something like that, literally like physical help. And also the chalk can discolor the paper, especially a light colored paper. You put a chalk line under a light wallpaper, you're going to see that line underneath the paper. If you don't, that chalk gets into the seams and it's not, I don't think it's a good idea. So take note of the way I'm holding the paper. This is the greatest obstacle to hanging wallpaper on the ceiling. It is the gravity that's militating against your ability to hold the weight of the wallpaper in the air. And it gets heavy after five minutes. And you have to hold that in place. It's very difficult to do without a helper. But we do it. The way we carry the wallpaper to the ceiling 
is very important in order that we unravel, unravel it properly while we're on that scaffold. If you don't take the wallpaper to the ceiling properly, you won't be able to unravel it properly and you'll have a mess. You'll wind up taking your first sheet down. So, and then your paste will dry either on the ceiling or on the paper or both. You don't want to do that. As you can see here, I'm not going to go through all of these frames this slowly, but I want to explain a few things before I speed up the video. I'm on that scaffold and I'm moving it myself. That's another challenge. Your wheels want to go in another direction while you want the scaffold to go straight. If anybody who makes scaffolds is listening to this, please come up with a motorized scaffold that we can, we can drive while we are in on hardwood floors or tile floors because this is another obstacle to hanging wallpaper on the ceiling and that is to get your scaffold to move in the proper direction while you're holding wallpaper in place. And so after you get the wallpaper up, you're far from done. You have to quickly come back and not only smooth out the bubbles, but you have to wash it down. And so you have to keep a bucket on the scaffold into which you dip your sponge and wipe that wallpaper down before the paste dries because it is a pain trying to wipe down a ceiling wallpaper job at the end of the night. Um, chances are you'll be coming back to that job because you will not have done a good enough job. Okay, I will edit as, as I see fit. If you have any questions, please just let me know. So our first piece is in the middle. And why is that? For symmetry. With the use of a laser level, we run a straight line down the ceiling. How do we know where it is? Don't go by the light holes. You see that hole right there? See this one? They are not perfectly straight with this one. There's one under here, I haven't cut it out yet. So I measured from the edge of that crown out, and then about six feet away again, from here out. I determined the middle of the wall, and then I drew my center point from an equal amount of distance from here to there. Here's why. The room is not perfectly square. So I'm going to go off of the parallel of the long wall. If I don't, what'll happen is I'll wind up at the end with a, with a pattern that looks like this. See my fingers here? They, they won't run parallel. So I'm assuming that this crown and that crown are at least parallel. So that my line, I can create the illusion of square by simply coming out an equi equal amount of distance from here to there, from here to there, and from here to there. You get the point. The issue is to start in the middle. Okay, let's put up our second sheet. It doesn't matter which way you go now, either this way or that way. In order to make 
the wallpaper more manageable. You see, I take another roll of wallpaper and put it underneath it as I hold it up against the ceiling. It makes it far more manageable than going up there and holding it in your hand. Picture holding a pizza pie after it's cooked and putting your hand in the center of the pizza pie, right? What would happen? The pizza would flap over your hand and sag, and it would be completely unmanageable. You would put a metal tray underneath the pizza. And so in like manner, you see I'm holding that roll of wallpaper. Now, that wasn't the greatest idea because it's a full roll of wallpaper. It got heavy. What you can do is take another sheet of wallpaper, roll it up tight, and then use some non-tacky tape to hold it in place, to give it its strength, so that that can be your support underneath all of the wallpaper. Second consideration is look at the way I have flapped the wallpaper in my right hand there. You see how it's layered to give me the wallpaper as I stand on that scaffold? That is the most important thing to learn from this video. And that is what hand to hold your wallpaper in. What hand do you use to manipulate your wallpaper and put it into place as you're on that scaffold? Those two considerations are by far the most important lessons that I had to learn before I began hanging wallpaper successfully on ceilings. You see how the wallpaper just comes right off of my left hand? That's because I have folded it in such a way that it gives me 20 inch pieces at a time. You know what would be really easy? If you had a paste the wall wallpaper that goes onto the ceiling. This way you won't have to bear the weight of the paste and the paper like I'm doing here. This was a paste of the product. If it were a product that required you to paste the ceiling first, well then I would just take my wallpaper I would invert the wallpaper by re-rolling it up in the opposite direction and exposing the back and simply take it to the ceiling and just put the backing up against the ceiling that has already been pasted. So if you're watching this video and you can find a product which are very easy to find. If you find a pattern you like, even greater, that you can paste the wall or the ceiling, well, it makes the job a, a whole lot easier. Trust me when I tell you. So I'm going to start speeding up the video and I'll comment as I see fit.
again, we want to use something to hold the wallpaper so it doesn't collapse in your hand. It doesn't always work out, but ideally, right? That's the idea.
See now why we begin in the middle. Look at the bottom of your screen. When we get to the second to last sheet, on the other side, you'll see an equal amount at the bottom of your screen as you do here. It's called symmetry. And that's what happens when you plan from the middle and work outward you wind up with an equal amount on each side of the room.
If you're still watching the video at this point, I realize it's a long one, but my customer decided to come in and video me. He uh, absolutely loved the job, but his wife picked out the beautiful paper. So here we are to the end. We have the piece over here. Note the distance between wallpaper and wall, and you'll see the same distance over here. And that is the reason why we start in the middle. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you have these squares, right, or triangles, you want to get an equal amount of triangles or squares on each side, okay? You may not have a square or rectangular room, so you plan accordingly. But we're almost there. What helps when you're working on a ceiling is if you spritz the wallpaper and or the ceiling with water. It buys you time. You're working more slowly because you're working on a ceiling. It's more physically taxing on the body and consequently you may not realize it but you're working at a slower pace. As a result, the, the water and the paste starts to dry up. And the wall covering consequently becomes more difficult to manage. In order to decelerate the time during which the paste is drying up, add water. And you will buy yourself some time and get a better installation.
Unfortunately, I had to mute the sound of the video because the customer was playing copyright music and YouTube won't publish your video and allow you to monetize the video. If you have content in the video that belongs to somebody else, it makes sense, right? So what do you think? There's the ceiling. Let me tell you something. I'm very proud of this work. I'm going to tell you why. I did it alone. It's very, it's, it's the accumulation of all of the knowledge, how to hang the paper. And then you have to master the technique to do this alone. This was the beginning. This is where we began the day before. And the end result, I think, is absolutely stunning. So there you have the ceiling. I will repeat that you should get a cleaner, meaning a, a sponge on a pole. I use a microfiber cloth on a pole because when you're installing a ceiling, it taxes the upper body muscles so much so that in my experience, wiping down wallpaper on a ceiling after you've installed it for six hours is not an effective way to clean a ceiling wallpaper. I suggest that if you use a different set of muscles by using a cloth on a, on a pole, you'll be able to use your legs and your hips rather than your upper body. And that will effectively clean it. And if you watched the whole video, you'd see that I, I did just that. I used a microfiber cloth on a pole in order to wipe down the ceiling. Getting a call back to wipe down by paste off of wallpaper is a professional embarrassment. Don't let it happen to you if you're a pro. And we took two days while prepping the ceiling in anticipation of wallpapering the ceiling on the third day. After two days, we were done with the walls. And on the third day, we tweaked the skim coat on the ceiling and hung the paper in the same day. When I say we, I mean the three of us, me, myself, and I. Now, let me show you the ceiling. I think you'll like it. What do you think? Let me show you again. Okay, who was trying to count the boxes? Come on. <laughs> 